So hi everybody. Um, my name is indeed Nick Wienhoff. I'm working for Drop Solids. Um, I'm the, the CTO here. Um, we're going to talk about open personalization with Apache Unomi in the GDPR era. Uh, I can see that we're with 35, um, so that's a, that's a pleasant crew to talk to. Uh, I cannot see you, but um, I do expect um, that you have some questions about, okay, what is the session about? What technologies will we cover? Um, maybe there are some people that work in strategic departments. Maybe there's people that work in front end or in back end. So which technologies will we cover? We'll talk about Drupal, um, also the JSON API that comes within Drupal and a bit about the layout builder uh, in Drupal. We'll also talk about Next.js um, and um, uh, about Apache Unomi. Now, um, the, the harder question is um, the, the why, yeah? what's the end goal of a website? And um, the end goal of a website is, is very, uh, like very vague because ultimately you do this for a specific customer. And it could be that your customer is from government. Um, so then the end goal is to distribute uh, information, correct information. Um, it could be that you have a web shop where the end goal is ultimately to uh, increase revenue um, and, and sell products uh, via profitable company. Um, certainly in, in this era where everything is digital. Um, but also it could be that your end goal as uh, maybe a site builder, uh, front end developer, uh, whichever role you have in this process um, is to provide a great content experience uh, or content editor experience. So I'll give you a bit of a, a small demo on um, what uh, Drupal did with the layout builder. Um, this is not yet in a decoupled way, but uh, we'll show you a demo or I'll show you a demo in a bit on uh, why is this related with decoupled and uh, how this uh, can also run in a decoupled fashion. And then uh, later on, we'll also talk about the personalization. So uh, I'm a content editor um, and I wanna manage my content. Uh, so uh, I can see I have some specific blocks here. Uh, this is great because I never leave my, my front end. Um, and I'm adding a block, um, maybe I'm adding an image. Um, so yeah, let's add an image. And then the reason why I'm showing this is that also this kind of experience you, you want to deliver for any content editor, regardless on um, whether the, the front end is uh, decoupled or uh, not decoupled. Um, but also um, we want to figure out how to create this experience for the content editor, but also allow um, then a personalization uh, in a simple way without um, introducing another tool where this thing goes on top of it. So what we did now is I had an image left, a text right, I'm adding a small blob of text. Um, for those that haven't seen Layout Builder, uh, this is a great introduction video. Um, so okay, I'm adding some text. I'm not quite satisfied as a content editor. So I want another block of images uh, on the left and a text on the right. Um, some, some blah, blah here and there. Okay. Um, and then maybe um, I'm saying, okay, this is fine, but actually I want this blob of text in between those two sections. So I'm adding another section um, to then drag and drop this content piece to the top um, because in, Remember, we are a content editor right now. This is um, more or less what um, people that work with content day in, day out expect um, for flexibility. Um, I'm saying, okay, I, I want a background on this particular uh, piece in the layout, and I'm not quite satisfied. I'm also moving the image from the left to the right. So what, what we did is not only add content, but also added a lot of structure uh, into um, the content. And ultimately, we also want this structure and the content exposed into APIs to then have it in a, a decoupled fashion. So all of this is probably worth like a, a full other session on how to do this and what it means. Um, I think uh, also in this uh, conference, we'll talk about that a bit more, um, but all right. So this is a question and the answer, uh, why do we build websites? Is it selling products? Is it to help the visitor find the right products? Um, it really depends on, on the website. Now, let's take a step back um, and I'll try to move um, through this section quite quickly. But what is happening um, in the, the big uh, analyst uh, companies like Gartner and Forrester 
they replaced the CMS quadrant with a DXP quad quadrant. Um, normally, I would ask the whole audience, like, who has heard of a DXP? Um, and then some people would raise their hands. Um, I'm happy if you do this in the, in the session chat if you want. Um, but then the, the trickier question is, so what does it even mean? Uh, so we know that a CMS um, manages content. It's kind of self-explanatory. But the DXP, what is a DXP? It, it's very vague. So I'll try to give you an answer on that. And then also why personalization um, is, is so critical to add to that toolbox of the, the toolbox that you know today. So, um, and then we have Adobe DXP to give you some info and well, how they sell it. Uh, they sell with a lot of channels, um, lots of APIs, front-end experience layer, uh, whatever that may mean. Um, but mainly take a look at personalized marketing that they see there um, next to customer marketing analytics. All right. Sitecore, very much the same. Uh, there's channels on top. There's uh, some management layer, so which is a content management layer. Um, there's analytics, uh, automation, a bunch of other stuff. Um, but then they, they also add customer data to the database layer. Okay, so this is Sitecore. We have Acquia. Acquia recently rebranded to OpenDXP, um, which uh, maybe this is no longer the current branding. But they have very similar um, ways of moving forward. So they have the Drupal Cloud, which is a CMS and, and hosting on top of it. And they have more content APIs. Um, but then the more interesting part uh, for this conversation is this marketing cloud, um, which they have uh, Lyft, um, but also Journey. Full disclosure, I, I worked on Lyft for two to three years uh, at Acquia. Um, I'm no longer an employee of Acquia, so I'm uh, neutral right now towards this. Um, if we talk about LiveRay, uh, which is also in the, the whole um, quadrant, they have very similar uh, words that they use, web content management, content targeting, personalization, um, all right, Epi Server, very much the same. And they even lead with Vista Intelligence. Um, DropSolid, the company I work for, also has a very similar diagram. We have the CMS with Drupal, marketing automation with Motic. Um, and then on the left, you can see where Unomi starts to, to fill in the gap for us. Um, this is our customer data management. Um, I'm okay if, if you don't under, like if you don't um, fully agree with all these words because most of these words are a, a bit of a marketing speak terms, um, but they do make sense. And also for Dries, uh, one of the, well, the founder of, of Drupal, already mentioned in 2014. Um, that we should start looking at it as a digital experience platform. Um, so, okay, even though the word back then didn't make any sense, um, it does uh, it does make sense to think about, okay, what is missing today in the ecosystem? Uh, even though you could have uh, content APIs, whether or not it's Drupal, and then a whole front end on top of it, you still need something to um, figure out, okay, what's the intention of the customer and can I maybe adapt the, the content uh, based on uh, what I detect as intention. This is, uh, this DXP thing is not just a product, it's not a website, it's not a tool, it's not a one-way communication vehicle, it's also not standalone, it's not something. Um, ultimately, it's a system that you provide to your customer um, where the customer is able to self-service, create content, um, and then target it to the, the audience that uh, he or she wants to target it to, um, to then uh, ultimately uh, go back into the why um, is the website uh, there. It's either to create conversions on content or on commerce uh, or any other goal that maybe exists. Let's get technical a bit. Yeah, so that was uh, the background. Um, a long, long time ago, we had uh, custom software. Think of Turbo Pascal, think of Delphi or Basic. Um, and it, it was a whole new era uh, where suddenly software started to kick off and, and solve problems. Um, then we got into the era of Bill Gates uh, where we had Windows 95, um, but also Office. Uh, it was distributed on CDs with license keys. Um, most of you um, will remember the, the amount of CDs that, that you had uh, at home. Um, 
And then something interesting happened, uh, which was the, the SaaS uh, world, which is software as a service. Um, and for this, if you're interested in, in the why, uh, I can recommend you a book about Salesforce. Um, Salesforce has a book called um, Beyond the Cloud. Um, and they had a, a campaign that they deliver. I think they hired 100 actors to go um, to a software conference where they had commercial of the shelf software. And they said software is dead. Uh, um, they basically meant CDs are dead. Um, but they wanted to deliver software uh, online, um, which is today uh, Salesforce, and it is quite known. Um, but uh, in, in my opinion, and I think in, in everyone's opinion here, we are now in a whole new era where we not only demand software as a service, we, we want to own the data, we want to own the, the software, we want to make our own choices. Um, and this is the era of the commercial open source software. Um, Drupal is one of those, also uh, React, and React changed the license um, to, to be more uh, adopted um, from different ecosystems. Uh, there's uh, also Vue, there's WordPress, there's Elastic, there's Red Hat, all different kind of licenses, um, but it's commercial open source software. Um, and it, it used uh, day in, day out by hundreds, uh, millions of, of websites. Um, and data of Realme shows that this open core is the dominant business model used by most successful commercial open source companies. So that's great. It poses the question, um, why in the personalization uh, sphere or ecosystem, there's actually no alternative. Uh, even Acquia with Acquia Lift um, has, has this personalization as a proprietary software uh, where you don't necessarily own the data. Um, and for sure not for Sitecore or Adobe. These are very much proprietary software systems. Huh? Um, so, okay, let's take that apart and what that means in, in the Drupal ecosystem. Um, but um, if you don't use Drupal, it doesn't really uh, matter. Um, this also applies to anything that connects to a backend uh, or APIs um, where you want to figure out, okay, how to serve that um, relevant content to the, the user that is searching for it. And it, it still sounds vague, but I'll show you in a demo on, on how to make that more practical and, and what this uh, means and how you can deliver it. Yeah. So today with a CMS and, and great front-end technologies, you can very easily do um, all the highlights in uh, green. The slides are available. I see the question already there. The slides will be available right after the session. There's a link that I'll show um, it's hosted at uh, GitHub today. Uh, and I'm already actually presenting it from GitHub. So no worries. Um, so all of this is available today, um, but it's a bit more tricky to do advanced stuff. Um, technologies uh, like decoupled frameworks make it easier to do voice and immersive elements, um, but it doesn't make it easier to keep a customer profile. Yeah. Um, the same with a platform, um, a Drupal or other content uh, management systems make custom development easy. There is a great community. Uh, they have integrations, um, also multi-channel. Uh, you see headless, decoupled, hybrid um, are making great uh, progress. Um, but it's a lot trickier to uh, make ease of use with site visitors, content editors, developers, analysts. Um, creating alternate UIs for those channels that cater to people in the move. This is why we're here and what we're trying to solve today in, in the couple of days. Um, but it's nearly impossible uh, with the tools of today to do natural language generation, uh, neural networks, uh, to make assistive, assistive decision-making, make the right decisions in an intuitive and attractive interface. Uh, this is very tricky material. Now, um, in terms of experience, and, and this is where it gets uh, tricky, um, we can search. Uh, so there's in, in the Drupal ecosystem, there's search API. It's also exposed with JSON API. Um, you can create facets and, and all those things. It gets a little more tricky if you want to do recommended content, personalized search, or boost results with AI. Um, if you want to know how to do the boost results with AI, um, at DrupalCon in um, Amsterdam last year, I gave a session on how to do this with open source technologies. 
Um, but it's nearly impossible to do personalization A-B testing, change the site according to the intent, um, create rules to detect these intents uh, to, to really facilitate it for the marketeer. So what do we have? Uh, we have Drupal, there's Solar Elasticsearch integration, there is Motic that's open, many vendors for hosting your Drupal site on steroids, think of Amazi, think of Platform, SH, uh, Pantheon, DropSolid. Um, well, what are we missing? We're missing this customer data platform, personalization and consent management. Consent management is particularly um, necessary in Europe with the whole GDPR guidelines. Um, um, maybe um, if we have time, I'll answer some questions about that in the Q&A. I didn't focus too much on this, um, but the solution that I'm proposing uh, has support for consent management. So what if we could go from here, uh, from this, the current state, into this, just by adding something to our tool set? Um, and um, I want to show you a small demo. And uh, for this, it has some audio on the video, and I'm hoping that you can hear it. Please let me know if you cannot hear it, okay? Hi, this is the distribution for uh, easy content uh, made by Sion. The um, purpose of this demo is to figure out how we can personalize the layout builder um, in a decoupled fashion. So what we'll do is to figure out how to uh, get this connected to Unomi um, through the DropSolid platform, but can also be used separately. And to then figure out how to, we can get some of these content blocks, uh, which are these test blocks, um, uh, personalized depending on whoever visited, visits the website. All right. So let's first take a look at um, how we can start to personalize. There is um, an interface made by DropSolid for Unomi. Unomi is open source software um, uh, for which you can make this yourself. Um, or at least power it to uh, do simple rule building segments. In this case, we're using the machine learning um, algorithms from DropSolid to have a quicker segmentation of the visitors. Um, and um, I'll let it run here. And so we regenerate um, our four segments um, based on an algorithm that uh, was funded by the Flemish government. Um, and that we're productizing. Now, this doesn't really make any difference for Unomi. Um, you can still do very simple rule-based systems with Unomi. Uh, for example, if you visit uh, a part with um, Drupal in front of it, then this will uh, work just as well. It's a bit harder to get the intention, ultimately, of the visitor and then to, to change the content based on that intention. What the algorithm is doing here, um, is that it's calculating the similarity between more or less 400 sessions and then to try to divide them in four different buckets or groups as we call it. We'll see the last uh, 14 days. Um, this is a test data set and then the 10 frequent words uh, of the drop solid site. Um, this is really for the demo purpose because the, obviously the CM website that we're testing this on uh, is not in production. All right. So it's pre-processing data. Great. So now we have four groups. Um, and as you can see, there, there are quite some differences. Uh, the, the biggest group uh, is here. Um, and then there is also some smaller groups based on a uh, different amount of sessions. Um, what we do is that we transfer those into Unomi segments. Um, you can see that we already made some. Uh, this is the, the old group, and we're going to see if we can uh, compare this uh, with one of the newer groups. This is the idea on how to update these segments. Um, I'll just go back to the original groups um, because we already have them in, in uh, working. So we have a group of applicants, community, business decision maker, and technical decision maker. Great. So how does this work? Uh, what we want to do here um, in the installation profile is to change um, the, this layout and only show one of these blocks uh, in the layout. So let's take a look on how this should work. Great. Um, there is a block for each. And uh, how we're going to do this is that um, Drupal is connected to these same segments, as you saw 
uh, in Unomi. So, so this is a direct connection into Unomi. Um, we can select the segment in Unomi um, that corresponds to the segment that we want to see this block on. All right. So let's go back. Um, this is the same for all these four. And um, imagine that we can now see this in, uh, in Drupal itself. So let's see this in Drupal itself. There's a, a Chrome extension that shows me the same segments um, because it's a bit tricky to figure out how to get into that segment. So imagine that um, I want to see what an applicant sees and based on whatever you know, he thinks is uh, an applicant. Um, this could be augmented with the machine learning logic that drops all it built or uh, simple rule building. But you can see that in, in the basic Drupal case, this is not decoupled yet. Um, we can see these segments. Uh, so depending on what I choose, I see different uh, content pieces. Now the, the real kicker comes in um, with the three on installation profile. Um, what they did is um, they created um, a repository, easy content decoupled. This repository uh, is an XJS application that uses the same style guides uh, from their installation profile, but also has support for a layout builder. Let's take a look at what that does. You can see this is a little different. Um, and uh, yeah, to, to prove you that this is really running, um, I have a, a like a, the, the node application here from the next JS, uh, but also you can see this is the, the end block of a local tunnel that I have to show that all the content basically comes from uh, the Drupal API. Um, but the interesting part is that also these custom blocks that were built in the layout are here and are transposed into um, a decoupled fashion. So with the same Chrome helper, um, which I have, yeah, let's see if I try to do the community segment. Great, so we can see test community. Oh, um, all right, so just to make sure that you believe me, um, I'll add a block here in the bottom um, for the, the test segments that we created. So let's do a demo. There's also a segment selection here. This is for any block, uh, but for Layout Builder, we're doing it a little bit different using the visibility properties. So this is a patch for Drupal core for visibility conditions. You can see you can also do it based on the current team or anything else. In this case, we want to do it for, you know, me um, segment selection. I add the two test segment visitors loving Drupal. Let's add the condition. Great. Save the layout. All right. So if we then go back to um, our front page and load the decoupled version. Yeah, we don't see anything here yet, but if we change it to test segments, visitors loving Drupal, great. See, now we see the couple days demo. Um, you could do this for any kind of block here in this layout builder. Um, it works in a decoupled fashion. Uh, Sion did a, a tremendous effort in trying to figure out uh, how to get all that information also um, into Next.js, into a decoupled. Great. So uh, now we saw how to, to connect you know, me uh, with Drupal, with Next.js um, to at least change the content uh, in the front end, allowing the content editor to even control the whole layout um, while giving the, the front end development team uh, full control on, on the, the front end technologies used um, without any restriction. And because you send out structure, you send out data, you send out uh, restricted data based on the context on whoever the visitor is. Um, but that's not all. Uh, so uh, the content marketing uh, or the content marketeer is happy. The front end uh, development team is happy. The back end development team is happy. You're not sending out um, original data and then use some JavaScript on top of it to change the data uh, where the marketeer like, or the content marketeer like, has to go into two different systems. Um, and on top of it, because this is all integrated, um, it's also possible to link this to Google Analytics. Um, and in Google Analytics, you can um, send the same name of the segment uh, that you made in Unomi. And again, all of what I'm showing here, except for the machine learning, is completely open. Eh? So 
Um, I'll get into how you can do this yourself um, in a bit. But you can see that this is from the DropSolid website. We have a, quite a lot of sessions uh, from business decision makers, um, but also from community uh, people that click on Drupal blogs uh, or um, other technical um, articles um, that don't necessarily uh, go into business uh, ideas. But we also have technical decision makers. And it's very interesting because uh, around 6% of, of each of those two segments, um, so they're quite equal in terms of traffic. Um, however, the technical decision maker um, has a conversion rate of 12%, uh, while the community one has 5.3%. Um, obviously, this data is not enough to make like full conclusions and you need to run it over a longer period of time. Um, but now you can measure, okay, how does a conversion happen? And um, this is completely in the hands of the marketeer or the content marketeer. Um, there is nothing in Drupal you need to do to define a conversion. This is all Google Analytics. Um, you should let a tool do whatever it's good at. Um, this is not something you need to add in, in Drupal. However, uh, what you do need to add in Drupal is to take conclusions of this data and maybe show different content and see if you can increase this conversion rate um, for these specific segments. Um, so now it's it's like really fun to start to optimize um, for the personas we're actually build, building the website for. Um, so in short, this is a description of what Apache Unomi does. It's a Java uh, server. It's an open source customer data platform. Uh, the license is the same as uh, Apache Solar uh, or the Apache project itself. Um, there's a bunch of other uh, tools that um, they also provide at uh, Apache Foundation. Um, it's fully open source and you can host it yourself if you'd like. And it has an Elasticsearch backend. Now, the, maybe to go back a little bit, the Elasticsearch backend is very important um, because it means that even if you go to a hosting party and you say, like, you, can, you should uh, host a Unomi software, um, but I want to own the data. I want to host the Elasticsearch um, cluster. Um, the data is mine, um, and I want to keep it uh, at the side of the customer. Um, so this is a choice you have. With any other personalization platform that I know, this is not a choice that you are even able to get. Um, the data is always stored at the side of the product um, company, and maybe there's a BI tool that can connect to that data. So. Treat your data as gold, and the data should be yours. Um, how do you do this yourself? There is a Drupal uh, module for Unomi. Um, this provides these visibility conditions uh, in Layout Builder, but also on paragraphs uh, or on custom blocks. There is a PHP library um, to do the same with, for example, um, frameworks like Symfony or any other PHP um, code. You can get segments. You can do all of this stuff. There's also a Unomi SDK node um, for if you want to do this within the, the next JS um, framework or libraries or in, in Vue or React. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can access um, all of the, the Unomi APIs with this uh, SDK. Um, and then um, there's a couple of things that I want to do before I round up into the Q&A. Um, be on the lookout for lock-in. I mentioned it before, uh, there's great SaaS, but we are in a new era. Um, it's commercial open source software um, and it's a GDPR era. So who owns your data? Where is it stored? Um, and how, like, how will you treat that data? Um, follow it as much as you can. You do this for React, you do this for Vue, you do this for Nginx, Motic, Solar, Drupal. Why settle for less when it comes to this customer data? Um, where there's a lot of legal claims uh, that could happen if you choose the, 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 maybe it's the right product, but at the wrong license term, maybe the vendor stores it in the US um, while Europe doesn't allow it or vice versa. Um, so it's, it's better that you own uh, that part. And this is the solutions that, that drop solids like proposes into the, the bigger ecosystem um, and is uh, trying to uh, convince you to adopt Unomi as this missing piece that just wasn't there yet. Um, with that, I'm happy to open some, some Q&A. Um, you can see the link here. 
um, this is the exact presentation. Also, the video is there. Um, I don't know how much time we have left, um, but maybe Jonathan can help me right now. Thanks. That is awesome, Nick. Uh, I, I have learned a lot in the past 30 minutes. Um, so we did have a, a question or two, and uh, we have 14 minutes left in the session. So one question that I recorded earlier was, are you aware of any solution that exposed the Drupal layout builders data or content API modules, such as the JSON API or GraphQL? Well, so what I showed you um, is the, the easy content distribution um, from Srian. And they, like, you can get it on Drupal.org. Um, and it does expose the whole layout builder structure. And they have the, the whole demo, like the Next.js uh, demo that um, has demo content. So it, it's a great start to figure out how to handle this. The, the tricky part is that there's still uh, necessary changes to Drupal core to allow these visibility conditions, but that's something that we're still working on. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I guess I didn't follow that that was a part of the distribution. Thank you. Um, I can show that real quick, maybe. Um, easy content. Um, so this is the, the distribution from Srian. Uh, so they here they allow layout builder and, and a bunch of other things. Um, but then there's also the easy content API. Uh, and then you have this um, repository. And basically there's some mini tutorial on how to get this installed. Uh, this is the Next.js application. You have to fill in some username and password credentials from the, the easy content distribution. Um, and then you should be set to go um, to create the layout builder um, content editing experience in a decoupled fashion. Um, I used just all what they did and then did the personalization on top of it. Okay, great. Uh, so we have another question. I'm not sure exactly what it is referring to, but one question is, what is that Chrome extension? Or what is the Chrome extension? The, um, the Chrome extension uh, right now you can find in the, the Chrome extension store, but it's specific to uh, the implementation of the DropSolid you know me, uh, hosted platform. Um, you know me out of the box uh, doesn't provide any authentication. Um, uh, nor any helper tools. So what we did is we added an OAuth layer um, on top of it and then created a Chrome extension um, to use those OAuth authentication details to connect to the Unomi API from within the browser. Um, and it's this, um, show you. So that's what it does. It's authorized with the platform. Um, we grant access and now we know, okay, is there a Unomi running on this site? And it shows you the, the segments. Um, the code itself in the extension is JavaScript. There are, um, maybe just to give you a tip, um, it's possible to download an extension and extract it into the JavaScript files. So if you're very curious on how it works, feel free to uh, decompose it. Awesome. Yeah. The tricky okay. part is to get accepted by Google. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Understood. All right. Uh, I've got one more, and this is sort of broad. So this is from Sean, and he says, uh, given the rise in tracking blockers, some are enabled by default, I think, in newer browsers, and the use of Google Analytics and the like aren't going to be as relevant and accurate with large groups blocking data. How do you envision personalization and being able to react um, how do you envision that will progress in a no tracker future? Well, so there's two things here, I think. Um, one is that um, the, the browsers are no longer allowing um, tracking uh, across um, different websites. So for example, Facebook trackers or um, 
analytics that um, are tracking you as a visitor across different sites that have nothing to do with each other, um, that will stop. Um, and uh, I think this solution uh, with you know me is uh, great because it's a first party um, data gathering tool or customer data platform. So for example, um, here we have the Drop Solid website, but it could also be the decoupled uh, days website. And um, the, the data platform could just be cdp.dropsolid.com um, and the, the cookie itself stays on the same website. Um, on the other hand, what we, we do uh, with tracking um, is to allow these categories and um, you have to adhere to, to the law. And if people don't want the categories, and maybe give you... Uh, so this is how we, we uh, implement the GDPR um, law for our customers. This is a retail, like um, a broker site to find houses um, and the whole personalization um yeah is here with ads or uh with uh, social media it really depends on how the marketeer wants to divide these categories but yes you have to um, agree with the fact that maybe half of your visitors don't want personalization that doesn't mean that you cannot optimize for the other half um and what we see in, in practice is that a lot of people um, accept all of the cookies that they don't really care, uh, but at least that they gave their consent. Um, ultimately, what we really want to do is to provide a page, something like my profile, um, where uh, any visitor can see all the data that uh, we have stored about that visitor uh, on that specific site. Um, it's already possible with you know me because you know me sends back the whole profile on every request, uh, including the segments that it falls into. So this is something for our next conference to show um, as in open personalization is one thing, but also open data as in what do we really have from you um, should really um, increase the trust that a user has to allow you to keep doing the personalization. Um, so that's something that I envision. It's to, yeah, we have to regain the trust of the visitors on the phone.